We're staying in the reusing content chapter, but I've got a new drawing for you. It's called dynamicblock.dwg. And what I'd like you to do is open up the dynamicblock.dwg file once you've obviously downloaded it from the library. You may have downloaded it already, and it might already be in a folder somewhere ready to be used. But just make sure you've opened up the dynamicblock.dwg file. Make sure also you are on the layer zero for the moment. And also, more importantly, you are in the model tab. Now, the reason we're on the layer zero at the moment is we've been drawing this particular rectangular polyline there and this arc there, like so, to represent a door and a door swing. Now, if you go to the layer dropdown, you'll see that we've got some layers, very simple layers, door and walls. Now, what we've been doing is creating objects that we want to convert into a dynamic block. This is a really nice feature in AutoCAD that allows you to add different tools to a block. We're going to add a flip action, which is a bit like the mirror command. Make sure you go to the door layer, though, because when you create your block, you obviously want it to go onto the current drafting layer. Because the objects that we're using are on layer zero, like in the previous videos, they will automatically go onto the drafting layer, which is our door layer. Now, we're going to create a block. So we go to the Insert tab now on the ribbon. And we've got here Create Block in the Block Definition panel. So click on Create Block, like we've done before. But this time, it will be a door. But what I always do is, if it's a dynamic block, I do an underscore and then DYN for dynamic. So people know it's a dynamic block. AutoCAD also displays a little lightning symbol next to any blocks that are dynamic. So you'll see that little lightning symbol as well. We're going to go to Pick Point, like so. And I'm going to use, if you zoom in, this little corner here. Can you see where it might be the hinge point for the door? It's also the bottom corner of the door, like that. So I've got an end point snap on that little rectangle that forms the door. There's no way I could have guessed those values, as you can see. Now, we need to select the objects that make up the block. So we need to zoom out. But to do that, we need to click on Select Objects. And then roll back on the wheel a few notches and pan down. You want to select the door, the rectangle, and the arc. That's it. And then Enter to confirm. And you'll see the little preview in the Block Definition dialog box. We do want to convert to a block this time. So make sure that is selected. And it's not going to be annotative. We're just doing this in the model space to see how the workflow works. I'm going to scale uniformly and allow exploding because I might need to make some changes later and create a different block from this block. Now, you'll remember when we created the last block, I said, do not tick open in block editor. This time, we're going to tick it. And then when you click on OK, something really weird happens in AutoCAD. You go into this space that you've never seen before. You've got the block editor in the tab on the ribbon at the top, and you've also got the block authoring palettes right here. Now, you're now in the block editor, which is where you can add the parameters and the actions to create a dynamic block. I'm going to do this at a really simple level because I don't want to get into too much detail here because I've already got a dynamic blocks course in the library that delves into this a lot more deeply. So we're going to create a simple dynamic block. Roll back on the wheel a notch, just so you've got a bit more space around your rectangle and your arc. Now, we're going to create what is called a base point first. So make sure you're in the Parameters tab on the palette, Base Point. Click on it, and the base point goes where we selected the insertion point for the block. And you'll see it adds a little sort of circular, sort of crosshair type thing there. That just means that you've got a base point to work from with the dynamic block in the drawing. Now, we need to add our flip parameter first. That's really important. So we're going to add two of these. So we're going to go flip parameter to the block definition. And it asks for the base point of the reflection line. Shift and right click on your mouse and you want mid between two points on the override snap menu. And it's endpoint there and also endpoint there. And you go vertically upwards above the door. Make sure the polar tracking kicks in to 90 degrees and click. And there's our flip state one. It will now ask you to put the label somewhere. Just put it above the sort of parameter there like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
What it's telling me now, though, is I've got a flip parameter without an action because I've got that little exclamation mark there. So I need to add an action to that at some point. Now, the trick is to do this one by one. So you add the parameter and then the action. So now I need to go to the Actions tab and select my Flip Action. It adds a flip action to the block definition. Click on Flip, and it will now say Select Parameter. So there's my parameter, my Flip State 1. You can rename these. They don't have to be Flip State 1. You can right-click and change the properties if you want to. So I'm selecting that there, like so. And selecting objects, roll back on the wheel and select absolutely everything and then enter to confirm, and you'll see flip state one. You'll also see that you've got a flip action. Can you see that? So when you hover over it now, there's your action there, flip one. Okay, we've done that. Hit escape a couple of times just to deselect everything, make sure nothing else is selected. We're now going to create another flip parameter. So we go parameters again, we go back to flip, and this time you're gonna zoom in a bit and you're gonna go from this endpoint, click, and then pan across to this end point here and click. And put your flip state to just out here somewhere and click. So you can see there, we've got another arrow. Can you see that one there? There it is there. Now, it might have been better to maybe do it the other way, just so that arrow is over here. So there's nothing to stop you selecting it and deleting it like any other AutoCAD object. So let's go back to Parameters tab, Flip and maybe go the other way. So go this way. So one, and then two, and put the flip state two over here. And can you see the arrow appears over there? Now, if I zoom out again slightly, you can see that we've got a flip going in each direction. Now, this arrow has an exclamation mark. So we go back to actions, like so. Flip action there, like so. Select this parameter this time. And we need to select the objects, absolutely everything including your flip state one, because that will obviously flip with your flip state two. Select everything and enter to confirm. Now, the nice thing is I don't have to leave the block editor just yet. I can test my block in the test block area here. So I go up to test block and I'm in like a drawing environment. I select the block. I can flip that way. It works. I can flip that way. It works. Close the test block and I'm back in the block editor. Now, what I can do here now is go to Close Block Editor, like so. And it will prompt me to say, do I want to save the changes? Well, of course I do, because I'm making my dynamic block. So I save the changes to Door DYN. Soon as I do that, I'm back into my AutoCAD drawing area, and you can see it's adopted the door layer. So when I click on that now, I've got some nice flip actions available. There's my base point that I placed, and I can flip this way and I can flip this way, like so. Hit Escape to deselect, and what I've done there now is it saves me having to perform the mirror command. I just click on the block, click on the flip, and it flips it that way, or I can flip it that way, that way. Doesn't matter which way I flip it, those arrows allow me to flip it in all the directions that I need to manipulate that door block in my AutoCAD drawings. I can then just hit Escape to deselect, it's back to its green layer color, and I can replicate that. And because it's a block, I can place that anywhere and everywhere in my AutoCAD drawing. 